Today we are going to start uh, creating um, uh, a class for a string. We already have this class in in C lang in C++ called string, but we are going to design our own, and through that, we're going to learn how everything works uh, with respect to dynamic memory allocation. It's going to be a review over there. We're going to see uh, uh, typecasting uh, overload and also uh, the index operator overload. We're going to see how it's going to work. So. Obviously, the next thing that I need to do is to create, to add a class uh, to my, uh, to my, uh, um, module, and I'm going to call it a string. The safeguard stuff, I'm going to set it later. I'm just going to do it as is now. The safeguard and the namespace, I'm going to add it later on. For now, let's just use it as is. We're going to create a unit test for it. So this is my string.cpp that includes string.h. And also, I'm going to have uh, a main, a tester. So get ready. We're going to have Q&A to do this, OK? String.h. So what I want to do is to be able to create something like this. String, I want to be able to say str string name, say fret. I want to be able to do that, OK? To create something like this, we're going to go Big mistake. It's not an operator equal. What is assignment at the moment of creation? One argument. One argument constructor. Never forget that. It has nothing to do with assignment at the moment of creation is not assignment. It's a one argument constructor call. That's definitely going to be on midterm. Definitely in one of the walkthroughs somewhere in the midterm you're going to have that to see if you can recognize that is not an operator overload. OK? And I want to do easy first. So I want to be able to say C out name. And I'm going to be able, uh, oh, uh, include C out. Include IO stream. And using namespace STD for now. And then we're going to create uh, uh, a namespace and do all the good stuff. And I want to be able to say C out name or say I see out hello name I want to be able to do this so that's the first thing I want to do an easy breezy thing to create okay so to be able to create something like this as our friend just mentioned over here we need to have a one argument constructor so that that's the first thing we need to have which is going to be so we're going to have public over here. It's going to be string. And what is the argument that it's receiving? What is the type of the argument at line 6? Constant character string. Pointer string. So, And make sure you write over here C string so we know that that's not a string. That's a C string that we are creating. And as soon as I do that, I know that I have to keep it somewhere. So what type of uh, uh, type I need over here to keep my data? Uh, character array. Character array. What a dynamic one. OK. So character pointer, the data of the string, whatever it is in there. Are we OK that to this point? Now, how do we find the length? So, so we are going to essentially encapsulate. We have two ways of doing this. Either we can simply not care how C language holds the string and what, what to do over here, what we're going to do over here will be essentially uh, uh, creating an array of characters and take care of it. Or uh, we can use. 
uh, C string and encapsulate C string using string header file and, and be done with it. I don't want to make it too difficult, so we're not going to go through that. And by the way, uh, coming back after study break, um, we're going to do lots of programming in the lab, okay? So um, I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to see how it works out, so it's going to be a pilot type of a thing. So when you start, I'm going to come over here, give you something and tell you do it, and then go to next step, and then tell you do it, and then go to next step to see what happens. So you do it with me, okay? So I'm going to tell you what topic we're going to go through. You have to study it and come for the lab so we can do it together. If I see we are going too slow, we're going to go back to what we had before. So after the break, that's how we're going to do it. So how do... Um, um, how does uh, uh, hmm, how do we find out length of something with strlen? Correct. Uh, so we're gonna encapsulate. We're gonna just use C string for now and create something over here, making it efficient and things like that's gonna be uh, later choice. So in here, I am going to add uh, C string to to do the dirty stuff over there. And I know as soon as I do that, it's going to ask me to, um, I, I, I never memorized that thing. Anybody remember what is that thing? So the underscore, what is that? CRT, secure no warnings? No warning or no warnings? Warnings. All right, OK, secure. Divine. <laughs> Divine. <laughs> Woo that's a new version of the file. So there you go. So, so immediately, as soon as I see I have that one, rule of three applies. Remember that. As soon as I have resource outside of my screen, rule of three applies. Rule of three. So what is the first thing that I need to create? For what? Destructor, not the Destructor. So the first thing is destructor. So I need to have a destructor. What do I need next? Huh? Pass. Pass. What do I need next for rule of three? Copy constructor. So what is the uh, copy constructor's signature? Copy constructor's signature. Dictate. String, copy constructor signature. Pass. <laughs> Next. <laughs> copy constructor signature. Seriously? You were supposed to have tests today, but this wasn't in a test, actually. This is <laughs> so, so you're allowed not to know. All right. Copy constructor signature is always a constant reference of the same thing. It's a copy constructor, right? Always. Okay, and a copy assignment, exactly the same thing. So it's an operator equal constant string, string reference to copy again. So, and obviously this is going to return string reference. That's the rule. Okay, and and obviously, because I want to show it, I need to be able to have a display. And the standard version for display is? Uh, I want to write a function for a display. Uh, what is a signature for it? Standard thing. The, the o -stream. Thank you. OStream reference, display, and then? <laughs> o stream, perfect. O stream reference, uh, some name, OSDR is equal to C out. Obviously, because I am in a header file, when I include uh, IO stream, I cannot include, uh, I cannot include the, <laughs> the namespace, and therefore, I'm going to have to say STD and STD and STD over here. 
All right. And probably a semicolon at the end would be nice. And there you go. So these are the things that we need. Yes. Yeah, we didn't do that. Um, you want me to do it, really? So if that's the case, I have to then do all the things in here now. I have to write over here. If not defined, SDDS. It's his fault. I didn't want to do this boring thing, but he's asking. So <laughs> string H. I thought you're going to do it at home. All right. And then we're going to have over here define and namespace SDDS and then bring everything inside. I was a happy boy. I was just living my life doing. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let me finish this. Now I have to finish the whole thing. I started namespace SDDS. And then I have to over here say using <laughs> namespace SDDS. Yes, sir. No, you can't because yeah. Oh bad person I am, bad, bad person I am. See you made me make this mistake. Namespace is outside. There you go. All right, okay, so and to overload this I have to use this display in an operator overload. Now, this operator overload must be a helper because I do not have access to OStream's class. Yes. So, OStream reference operator OStream STD OStream reference OSDR. And at right side, we get a constant string reference SDR or S, but I got to make sure to have this display const because I am not, I want to make sure I'm not changing anything. So these are all the things that I want. No, that has nothing to, it had to be operated, not operator. All right. Okay. So, so these are the things that I have to create. I'll start with the easiest one. That is this one, okay? Because, of course, it's string, but it's the easiest one. So I'm going to just implement that one first, which essentially is writing O stream. So let me just copy in here. That's the easiest thing to do, and I'm going to do it first, which is. Save, which is return s dot display, and passing OSDR to it. See, please memorize this. You don't need. To, there's no logic involved over here. This is something that you do it in two seconds. It's um, easy breezy. That it's standard. That's how it's supposed to be done. Are we okay with this? All right. A quick review on all these things. Next thing. We're going to have our, uh, we're going to have our string here created. So obviously, I always don't need to have uh, uh, one argument. Sometimes I want to have an empty string, right? So in here, I'm going to set this to null PTR by default. And if they don't provide something now, I can detect, or if they uh, and now I can detect it and I have a safe empty state. I, I do not need to have a safe empty state anymore. In all cases, I'm going to create my string properly. So to create this, we know exactly how to do it. We're going to do it as follows. So we essentially uh, measure the size of, so first we're going to say, first we have to make sure that our string is empty by default. So I'm just going to put it over here. So for all constructors, when string is created, M data is null. Are we okay with this? All right. So I don't need to worry about in, it being null before I do anything. 
So now, in here, I'm going to say if C a string, C, C string is not null, do the copying for me. So uh, allocating all the good stuff. So in here, I'm going to say, uh, what do I say? Uh, I will say, no, I'm in a constructor. Why do I delete? The object is new. I'm going to say uh, m data is equal to new character str len of c string plus 1. So I create the space for it, and immediately I'm going to copy into it. So str copy into m data the C string that I have. So there you go. Now I have my C string created and everything is good. But if C string is null, what do I do? Okay? What is my safe empty state? I don't want to leave my um, string as null PTR and then I have to keep checking to if I have something in there or not. To make my own life easier, I'm going to just say if it is null, just create an array, uh, an empty string, not null. So I'm going to say m data is equal to new character one. The reason that I'm saying new character one because I want them to both be array. So in my deletion, it both works for both of them. So I'm going to create an array of one, and I'm going to make that one zero. And we know that that means an empty string, right? So even if it's, em if it's null or it's empty, I'm going to have an empty string. So I don't need to worry about that thing ever be null at all. OK, it's going to work perfectly for me. Are we good? Deallocate? Yeah. Deallocate what? Uh, yes, of course. It's, it's one character. I know it's small, but you need to delete it. So that's that one. And then we need to immediately create our destructor because we do not have any type of special scenarios. Our destructor will get created simply by deleting the C string. And, and the M data. And the display is pretty simple one too. So let's create that one so we have something to look forward to. So these two I'm going to comment to implement later. Or I can make it a, uh, I can make it a prototype. I'll show you. I'll make it a, a dummy uh, function. So in here I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to create the definition for display. And the definition for display goes as follows, which is essentially... Um, it's impossible for it to be empty because even if it's null, we're going to have one character. So all I need to do is to say return OSDR M data and I'm done. So there you go. I have my display created. I have the data allocated. Uh, for now, I don't need these operations. I'm going to comment it or you can just create empty functions for it so it's compilable. Now let's compile and run it and start the, the application. So it starts creating a name. It calls the one argument constructor. So that becomes Fred. It sees what is the name, allocates the memory, copies it, and comes out. Then it comes into the C out thingy. Hello will be printed. C out and name work together to go to here, so OSDR is C out, S is the one that has Fred in it, it calls the display, and display simply shows that string, and therefore what I see over here that looks like a string is simply encapsulating the good old C string and showing all the things over there. Are we okay down to this point? Okay? To do copying and assignment is simple too, so I'm going to do it very quickly. Always when you are doing assignment, this is how it's done. When you are do always when you are doing, always when you are doing um, uh, root of three, first do the assignment operator, then call the assignment operator inside your constructor. That's all you need to do.
Okay? So, what you do, you simply create your assignment operator by saying, okay, I have an assignment operator. What, how do I create it? First of all, because it's assignment, I have to make sure the current object's memory is gone. So I'm going to say, oh, sorry, my apologies. What was the thing that we were doing? Uh, Self-copying. So if my address is not equal to the address of the one I'm copying, do all these things, and at the end, I'm going to say return this. All right? Okay? Then what I'm going to do over here is uh, first I'm going to say delete whatever I have in mData. Immediately after that, I'll do the exact same thing that I have done over here. It would be nice if I actually create a function to do that, but forget it for now, to do allocation and copying. But that's the case. So I simply, oh, and that C string over here that I'm actually doing is um, to copy dot mdata. Do I need to check to see if mdata has, uh, uh, is null or not? In reality, yes. But here, no, because I designed my constructor in a way that mdata is impossible to be null. I don't have a safe empty state. It is impossible for these th this thing to fail. So that's why I'm just going to let it go. Okay, and if the memory allocation fails, then the too bad, my program crashes. So that's the assignment operator. And to do the copy constructor, it's, it's the same way. So all you need to do over here in, the, in here, all you need to do, because assignment operator works on an object that is already there, you have to be careful with your copy constructor when you are calling assignment operator. If your copy constructor is being called, if your copy constructor is calling the assignment operator, you must make sure that this delete is not going to crash the program, which means you have to make sure that your uh, attribute is null. Because I made it null at the beginning, I don't need to worry about it. But I have, but I'm going to comment over here, say, make sure, make sure the data is, is null, which is, which it is in our case, because I have set it in all cases to be null, so I don't have to worry about it. So, all I need to do over here is to say, uh, operator equal to copy. So I simply call that and it's done. I don't need to rewrite the whole code because essentially this is, this is copying on an already existing object. That one is creating a new object out of the one that is copying, right? So all I need to do is to make it empty and recall it so I don't have to write code again. So my code actually looks like this. I have an assignment operator that assigns. In here, I'm going to say make sure I'm null. I am null because I already said it, So, which means something like mdata is equal to null ptr. Or you can put it in here. mdata null ptr. Any of these are okay. I'm not doing it because we already have it up there. So either you have to make sure the data is null or set it to null or initialize it to be null. To make this object empty so this operator equals delete is not going to fail. Okay? I'm going to say this makes sure that operator equal will not fail deleting the data. Okay? We are making sure the data is flagged empty, so delete ignores it. And we are done. Now, your copy and assignment and everything is going to work too. And you can test it in two seconds. Just 
If you want to test the, the assignment, you create another one. And, you're, and then you can say n is equal to name. Now this is actually uh, assignment operator, not copy constructor or regular constructor. And then I'm going to say over here, C out. OK, or to test copy constructor, I can do this. Oh, copy, like that. Copy is equal to name. Right? So now I have one string, another string that is being set, and another string that is being copied. So copy and assignment and everything. You want me to walk through details or you're okay? Anybody wants me to walk through details of it? No? Good. So just run it and you'll see it works and it doesn't crash. Obviously, this not crashing over here doesn't mean anything. Move it to matrix, that's where you're going to see if it's going to hit the fan or not, right? So be careful about that. So down to this point, we're all good and okay and dandy, okay? What if I want to know how long a name is? I want to get the length of a name. I want to see... What is the length of a name? <clears throat> there are two ways. Either we can have a function called length to see what the length is. So we can actually create a function over here called length. Like that. And in this length of hours, I can, in a fraction of a second, I can simply say return strln. Len of m data, okay. Or you can let this to work for you. So I have the length, so I can actually see what the length is. Let me, uh, in here I'm going to say rule of three and c out dot cpp. So that's that one. I don't want to have all these things over here, so. So Homer Simpson, and now what I can do over here is this C out uh, length, and that shows me what the length of the, the name is. So it looks uh, like an object-oriented thing, and for some reason it's, I put it in the wrong file. Copy, let me bring up main. Sorry. One more time. So it's going to say that length is 13, but I want this to happen. Instead of having length, I want to say C out. So when I cast it, to an integer, I want the length to come out. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is casting operation. I want to have a cast operator to actually set it up so it's the casting. OK? Are we OK with that? OK. So for this, what I can do is simply this. Go over here and say I want to cast this. How do I cast? I'm going to say operator int. I do not need to say what the return type is because the nature of the operator is cast and therefore it returns an integer. I'm saying, tell me, convert this to an integer. I don't need to mention anything. So in here I'm going to say const, obviously. And the results are exactly as the either you can call the other one or you can return strlen again. I'm going to return. This is a very inefficient thing, by the way. Very inefficient thing. 
Every single time it's called, SDRLEN is called. What is SDRLEN? A loop. That starts from the beginning, counts and until it hits zero. The best way is to actually have a variable called size and keep it in there and end off this charade of going looking. But we just want to encapsulate and see how it works. So that's why. So now if I do this, my program actually understands what is the meaning of uh, int name. And when I call that, it actually returns 13 again. Yes. All right. Okay. So are we good with this? Another thing is that I want SDR C string, I want C string header file to recognize my, my name as a C string. I want to be able to do a crazy thing like this too. I'm going to have to cop copy. Oh, here, here. Why did I put the secure no warnings over there? Bad boy I am. And C string, why did I put these things in here? Copy. Bad person I am. And none of you told, you told me why you are putting it over there. You only put the header files <laughs> and the file statements in the place you need them. Not here, it has to be here. Yeah, so as I was saying, I need those things over here to test something. So I'm going to bring them over here. Oh, I need those. I don't want them. C string. What I want to do is this. What I want, when I say I want it to be recognized, is this. I want to be able to say over here, character... Uh, SDR say, I don't know, 100. And I want to be able to do SDR copy into SDR name. I want that to work. How can I do that? What is the second type of the argument in SDR copy? It's a why? Guys, you have masks on and you're speaking, I cannot read your lips, so you have to be loud. <laughs> now, I recently, seriously, I recently noticed that I actually read lips. I didn't know that. Because before this, people would talk and I would understand what they say. Now I'm just hearing, I don't understand anything, so loud, please. So what is the type of the second argument of SDR copy? constant character pointer because it's being copied from, right? It's a constant character pointer. So the compiler wants this to be a constant character pointer, right? Sure, I'll make it. I'm going to say when string is being casted to a constant character pointer, when the string is being, if the string is being casted, to a constant character pointer, I want you to return and data. Right? M data is character pointer, and when I pass it as constant, it's just gonna be casted to constant and return, right? So now, so now when I did that, the compiler wouldn't wouldn't complain anymore. Because now, when it wants to cast name to a constant character pointer, it can. Also, I could have, instead of this int name thingy, I could have have over here int length. And I could say length is equal to name. Is set to name. That would work too. Because now compiler says, I have an integer at left. A name at right, uh, a string at right. Can I convert that to an integer? Yes. You follow? So now, 
my string can be casted to an integer, constant character, and everything works perfectly over here. Uh, possible loss of data. You see it says size t to int. You see that? Because, uh, uh, yeah, so because string length returns size t, size t is a type C++ has for size. It's essentially an unsigned integer, something that cannot be negative. Okay, it is an OP345 thing that we go through, but it's not a bad idea for you to know. So when you see size underline t, that essentially means a variable that is capable to hold size of something. And size of something is always a positive integer, right? So instead of, instead of creating length being an int, I can actually have size t over here. That's much more uh, uh, C plus plus C, let's call it. <laughs> or I could have said unsigned int. So uh, I don't know. Um, ah, shush. Okay. That's extremely OP345. We cannot talk about that now. They say we don't talk about Bruno. That's what we are doing. We don't, nobody have seen it. Did, did you? Nobody watches cartoons anymore. I have a six year old, seven year old, eight year old. So. Anyways, I just mentioned my daughter's name with three different ages that is neither, neither is hers. <laughs> She's actually nine years old. <laughs> I said six and I remember, that's a little bit too late. Then I corrected to seven and eight and still I didn't make it. She's actually nine, but okay. So, uh, so in here, just to make sure the compiler doesn't complain, I'm gonna say int SDR length. Let's see if it's gonna complain or it's gonna still tell me loss of data. Which one is this? And this one too. So I'm kind of telling to compiler, hey, I know. I know. Don't, okay. So now it's working and I have 1313 13 and Homer Simpson over there in, S in MS3. Are we okay with this? Any problem down to here? I didn't call int. Casting, casting in C++, the parentheses goes around the thing you are casting. I'm casting the size t to an integer. I'm not calling anything. Casting itself, right? I am casting SDR lens return value. SDR lens return value by warning was size t. I don't want it to be size t. I'm retaining an int so it doesn't complain. But the best way is to return, change all those ints to size t. Do it at home and make this thing work professionally. Are we okay down to this point? All right, so now another thing I like to be able to do is this, that is pretty painful when you're actually dealing with, uh, 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 with um, uh, the strings that you have, like uh, with, uh, with C strings. So in here I'm gonna say, a conversion, uh, uh, conversion uh, operator overload. So conversion operator overload dot cpp, all different types of it. Now what I want to be able to do that is very painful in, in C is this. I want to be able to have, and I don't think I need these now. I want to be able to say string name is set to Homer. Let's make it Lisa this time. Okay. And then I want to be able to add a space afterwards. So I want to be able to say name plus plus. Add one space after and then say name plus equal Simpson. Things like that you can't do with regular things. I can make the plus plus over here, or, um, or I could do this. Or I could do this, string b name is Simpson, 
and I want to do plus plus B name to add a space before. And then I want to be able to say Long pause. <laughs> full name. I want to be able to say full name is equal to Bart plus B name. Okay? As you see, it's not giving an error over here. That's very dangerous, actually. Okay? I'll tell you. So all these things we can overload. It's going to do it very quickly. There's no problem with that. Okay? So we'll overload all those things. But why is it not giving an error over here? Can anybody tell me? Line 22. It's not giving me an error. You know why? Because as left side of a plus operator, what is the type of the left side of a plus operator? What is the type of the left side of the plus operator? What is the type of BART? It's a string. It's a constant character pointer, correct? When it says plus, you want to have another pointer over here, so add the two addresses together, right? But it can cast this. <laughs> So if you do this, it's going to add the address of this one to that one that is some crazy number that's going to go here. So you're going to have some crash thingy happen. So that has to get overloaded so the problem doesn't get. But anyways, all these things can be done. Name plus plus, how do we do it? Pardon me? I want to add the space after. So to be able to do all these things, they, are, they all can be done uh, with simple resizing of the, of, the, uh, uh, of the string. So all I need to do is to have a, a resize, okay, to resize the thing and, and resize the, the string and then add whatever I want before, after, or what, uh, whatever is needed to be done. So for plus plus, I know I can have a string reference operator plus plus, const, oh, not const, because I'm changing, right? I want to add one to it. So what needs to be done is, first, I need to have memory one size bigger because I want to add one space, right? So what I will do over here is this. I'm going to say, uh, <clears throat> uh, Character resizing, it means I'm going to have a temp, uh, so a temp pointer over here. At that temp is going to point to uh, create a new uh, character string of size str len of the data that I have now. Plus one, that's for null, plus one, that's for space. Because I want to add a space after, right? So now I can do SDR copy into M data. Uh, sorry, into temp from M data. And then I can say SDR cat to temp a simple space, one space. String cat concatenates, right? And then after all these things done, I can say delete M data and make M data point to the newly allocated memory and return this. <clears throat> Done. So now by doing this, I create a string where there's one size bigger. I copy everything to the beginning as a, a space after, delete, and make the pointer point to the newly allocated thing with the, that has everything in it, and it's done. And I can do the, the other one very quickly, too. I can simply say string operator plus plus, but postfix. So it works essentially the same way. It's not much different. So it's the exact same thing. Let me just 
copy everything over here. But the space needs to be before, right? So I still need one more space. But instead of copying um, M data, I'm going to say copy one space. And then copy M data. And then concatenate M data. Same thing, right? First space and then. So that's space before. Plus equal, I want to add something to it because at left side there is a name, it's a member. I, I'm going to make this operator overload work like a member and uh, that's what it's going to be. So in here I'm going to say string reference operator plus equal. At right side I'm getting a regular string. And this C string of mine works the exact same way. <clears throat> Again, character pointer temp is equal to new character. Now I need the length, length of this one plus the length of the C string plus one. Obviously, you might want to make sure that that's not null and do all these things. So because we, we don't know what they are sending, you could say if CSDR do all these things. Otherwise, don't do anything. So if CSDR is actually pointing to something, then do it otherwise. Now I have the two. I can copy an SDR cat. So uh, SDR cat into temp the M data. And then after m data str, oh str copy, sorry. And then str cat into temp, the right one that is c string. And done. And then again the exact same thing, delete m data and uh, make m data point to temp. You do three of these, believe me, it's going to be like, okay? So that's plus equal. And it is done. Finally, the one that gave me trouble, because if I run this, you know it's going to crash like crazy. So um, you want me to run it and see what happens? It's going to go bananas. I don't want that to happen. I want left side to be Bart, right side to be Bart, the left side to be a, to a primitive type, right side to be my string. Because that's the case, it cannot be a member function. Therefore, it has to be a helper function. And helper functions return only by value. So what we need to do over here is to come over here and say, I want to have a helper function that returns a string, but by value. It's operator plus plus constant character pointer left. And then we have the uh, constant string reference at right. And we want this to return a string. Now you will see it may give us a conflict, which is good to see, but we'll find out. Anyway, so. So now I'm going to create a string. I'm going to say L and I'm going to make it out of left. So that L of mine, this L of mine will actually be a, be a string. And now I need to add the content of this one to the left one, correct? So all I need to do is to say uh, L plus equal right. I don't even need to overload that because I already have a plus equal that accepts a constant character pointer. It's going to force this one to get casted to constant character pointer and it works. So, um, and here I'm going to say return L. 
uh, just to make sure everybody understands what happens, you can actually do this const character pointer to kind of have the message that I want to extract it. So I don't need to create, make this one a friend of a function because I have access somehow to the value. And uh, hopefully that is that. And let's run it to see if it's going to crash in our face or it's going to actually work. So I'm going to say over here, see out full name. Run the program. See if it's going to create a problem anymore. Any problem? Oh, look at that. It didn't work. We have to see where and what and what's going on. So what did I do? I put the name, I did name plus this. this should have worked. Okay, let's fix our code. All right, one by one, walk through. So I have the name, name has Lisa in it, we have no doubt on that. Now I'm gonna add one space after Lisa. So we're gonna come in here, get the data for both. Oh, wait a minute, this is post fix. I made, oh, I put it reverse. This is supposed to be before, I, I, I made the code reverse. This is prefix, I'm doing post. In postfix, I'm doing pre. This is prefix, the space has to come first. This is postfix, the space has to come after. So that was just my mistake. Oh, now, nice. Look at this. Crash. Let's see how we're going to fix that. Okay? I really don't know what's wrong with it. We'll find out. Line 67. Oh. Oh, <laughs> you're right. Why did you kill all the joy of... <laughs> But thank you. Anyways, I was happy that we're going to go through something, but hey. Anyways, now we have Lisa Simpson, Bart Simpson. So, so now you can, sky is the limit. Take this thing, do it. You can do anything you want to with it, do with it, and use this instead of C string if you want to. Seriously, because it works exactly the same way. And most importantly, what if I want to have access to its characters? What if I want to see what is the fifth character in inside that screen? String, how do I do that? Easy. If I want to see, so this one is going to be operator overload, or different types of it. What if I want to have this? What if I want to be able to, actually, sadly, it, I think it's going to work. Sadly, I think it's going to work without doing anything, but I'm going to actually make it better, okay? So I want to be able to say over here, see out, name, to, and s get printed. Yes. That's called writing ambiguous code. Even if it's possible somebody sees you writing something like that, you're out of the door in two seconds. I don't know. Maybe it is possible. That's one. Like he's saying, can I write plus plus name plus plus? The answer is yes. But why? <laughs> you know, don't write crazy code. That way. First of all, let me just run this first. Now when I run this, you'll see that it's going to actually print over there. S, but how the devil did it work? How does it know that's the second one? It's because of this damn thing that we casted. We said, because the compiler tries anyways to try to fix that thing, right? We know that the name of the array carries the address of the beginning of the array, right? So it can, if it can somehow convert that <clears throat> name to a pointer, it can make an array out of it, right? 
And that's why he says, let me cast it to a constant character pointer and make it work. But the problem is that that's not safe. If I actually write over here, then we'll be in trouble. And if I, it, so it's going to go in somebody's memory and print some garbage, especially if I set it to something. That's going to be disastrous. Okay? Obviously, it cannot set it because it's a constant. But anyways, I don't want that. I want this index to be, to be intelligent. To do that, you can actually overload the index operator. The index operator is an operator that receives an index inside. Okay? So what you can do, you can say over here, so what do you want to return when the index is returning? I want to return a regular character. So I'm going to say character operator square bracket and integer index. Right? And obviously it's a constant because I don't want to change anything in here. So that's const. And to create this, I simply come over here and I'm going to say return m data index. Now, that didn't do any good. What's the difference? Right? It doesn't do anything good because if they put 20, still it's going to go. So what I can do over here is use a little math. So what happens? <clears throat> Let's say I have, a, I have four characters, right? If I put two mod 4, what is, the, uh, what is the result? 2 mod 4, 2. 3 mod 4, 4 mod 4, so it goes back to the beginning. 5 mod 4, 1. So no matter what they put over here, it's going to loop back in their own memory. I'm safe. So now if I actually, now let's see if it's going to actually pick this up. So now if I run this program, it comes over here. For this, it goes to operator. It actually returns the second one that is S. No problem. OK. And the other one, Lisa's length is 4, right? 20 mod 4 is 0. So it's going to return L. All right? But I want to make it even better. I want to be able to set the values <clears throat> if I want to. I want to, because like this, I cannot set it. I cannot set over, I cannot say name <clears throat> 50 is equal to, I don't know, uh, 34. I can't, uh, sorry, A. So it becomes ASA. Can't do that. So how do I do that? I need to, I need to, not of course 50, I'm just going to put over there something like 3. Wow, it's 5.08, right? The class is passed, isn't it? OK, wow, dear. And I have a class at 5.05, but it's OK. So, <laughs> so what I wanted to say, actually, we can continue it the next day you are coming in. So we'll stop it right over here. And I'm going to call it, say it, incomplete. Incomplete. All right, so we'll see you next time. Have yourself a beautiful day.